The House in Fata Morgana I was looking down upon a corpse, my own corpse. I was afflicted with great despair, yet the sight of it bring dragged to the place of my crucifixion. My soul crumbled, and I was wholly extinguished. Indeed, I did once lose everything. However, as I faded into darkness everlasting, I heard a voice calling out to me. And so, I vowed once more, that no matter how long it may take, how great the obstacles that stand in my way, or what form you may assume, I shall come back for you, that I must return to that house. So I ask of you, please wait until this mutilated body arrives there once more. Your consciousness, wavering like a ship at sea, was slowly drawn back to the surface. There, with each new breath, feeling gradually returned to your fingers. Master, you could hear the pattering of rain from somewhere. Master, and the sound of a crackling fire. Wake up, master. Crick, crick, crick. Wake up. When you came to, you were rocking back and forth in a rocking chair. The room was dimly lit. Aside from a flickering of the fireplace, there was no other illumination. No light shone through the closed windows. There was only the pitter patter of rain on the glass. It was as though the whole mansion had been enveloped in darkness. Oh, splendid. You have finally awoken. Someone called out to you. You were about to shut the room, but it turned out to be unnecessary. The source of the voice was crouching beside the chair, looking up at you with emerald eyes. Good morning, master. Good morning. Hehe, <laughs> what is the matter? Are you still waking up? You seem rather drowsy. Come now, you must gather yourself. Tof, I am glad to hear your voice. I have simply been waiting so long for this moment, tending to the mansion all by my lonesome, and showing it was ready for your return, whenever that time may be. When I caught sight of you through the window, my heart fluttered. The time had finally arrived. You were perplexed. This woman, who looked like a maid, seemed to know you, but you had no memory of her. What kind of herbal tea would you like to start your day with? I have some wonderful chamomile leaves, if you would like. Or perhaps your tastes have changed since last we met. Tell me, master, what would you like? <laughs> I beg your pardon. I allowed myself to get too excited, but I hope you will be sympathetic, master. I am just utterly elated that I could see you again. The woman appeared to be genuinely delighted that you had awoken, but she seemed to lack the energy typical of her age. Or perhaps life was a more appropriate word than energy. But the gloom extended beyond the maid. It seemed to encompass the entire mansion. The plaster walls illuminated by the fireplace, and the rose engraving in the gloomy pillars felt vaguely familiar. But a crushing sense of claustrophobia overpowered that familiarity. It seemed as though the house wasn't interested in accepting you just yet. Oh my, you do not know who I am? Do you not know who you are either? That is quite a predicament. If you cannot remember who you are, 
then who am I to sell? The woman's face was pale, almost as tough as a faint chill ran down your spine. You are the master of this house, tough it would seem you have no memories of such. Quite a dilemma. If you know not who you are, then you are no different than a stranger to me, no? Indeed, you have returned, but from where? That I cannot say. Then how about this? I am a servant of this mansion, and as such, I am familiar with the many incidents that have taken place here. I shall show you the history of this house, master. That will surely allow you to recall who you are. The freshly awakened gears in your head began to turn as you moved things over. The maid had called you the master of this house, but without a single mirror in the room, you had no way of seeing what you looked like. Unable to decide, you reflexively nodded. Let us be off then. And fear not, I merely entreat you not to let go of my hand. Should you hold it tightly, you need not worry about being washed away by the waves of history. No matter what happens, you mustn't let go of my hand.